we are coming to the end of the book, but the journey is just beginning. Welcome back. As the seasons begin to change, we are coming into a change ourselves. We are coming to the end of this phenomenal read regarding this extraordinary Lapidus, a genius in his craft who continues to reach milestone after milestone. Oh my gosh, I am so ready for the big reveal. Are you ready? Stay tuned. It just gets better and better and better. This is the hardest chapter I've had to write. It is one of those stories I struggle to decide whether to write or not and add it into the book. This story I'm about to tell may irk some individuals and their religious belief systems. So whatever your religious background or belief systems are, I ask that you suspend your judgment about what you believe or think and be open to what you're about to read. Please just hear me out with an open mind. The year was 1989 and Shirley MacLaine was just placed on the cover of Time Magazine. Somehow this was to be the ultimate of the dawning of the age of Aquarius or something of that order. Now having gone mainstream since it was on the cover of a national news magazine like Time, Crystals and crystal energy was somehow now in everyone's consciousness. What I had experienced back then, the new age, was now somehow part of the mainstream of American culture, having come of age in 1989. All of a sudden, it seemed as though everyone was getting in on the act. A good friend of mine at the time, who wrote the age classic book, The Aquarian Conspiracy, was asked to be on the Oprah Winfrey show to come on and talk about this new age phenomenon going mainstream. Apparently, the producers of Oprah's show were putting together a panel of five to be representatives of different aspects of the new age. One of the panelists they were looking for was an expert in the crystal energy field to come on and discuss this new rage called crystal power. My name was given to them as someone whom they should interview for the show, considering my background in both metaphysics and gemology. I received a phone call from a producer of the show who interviewed me to find out if I would be this person. They asked several questions of me as to what I would be saying on live TV. It was all very exciting. I felt that what I had been experiencing and teaching since 1976 had finally gone mainstream. Crystals and their metaphysics had now gone mainstream and was going to be broadcasted nationwide in the USA. Apparently, I was this perfect person to be the panelist on Crystals. At the time, I felt my time had come and I could share with clarity my experiences and knowledge to the public, hoping to clarify and take some of the woo-woo out of what so many in the metaphysical community were professing. I really wanted to give sound science along with my spiritual experiences as a way for individuals to understand what the commotion was all about without it being disregarded as some healy feely crazy as so many were being labeled as at that time. Somewhat of a derogatory term, healy feely is used by the mineral and gem industry to describe individuals who got into minerals for the energy and metaphysics. I was thrilled they picked me to appear on national TV. This would be my very first live TV experience and with Oprah Winfrey, whom I had heard was really into crystals and metaphysics. And the producers mentioned, oh yes, Oprah loves crystals. So please, if you can bring some of your crystals with you to the show for display, that would be great. The panel of experts were my friend Marilyn, Kevin Ryerson, myself, and one new age debunker to counter this new cultural phenomenon. 
When I entered the studio set, I was shown where I would be sitting and where I could set up a small display for my crystals. Before the show started, Oprah came over to introduce herself to me and to admire my crystals. She was really enjoying them and one in particular was speaking to her. She then said how after the show, she would love to talk to me about this one crystal I had on display. I'm thinking how great it would be if Oprah got one of my stones. This would be such a wonderful thing. The show started out with each of the panelists sharing five minutes of expertise. I remember talking about how molecules bond in an intelligent manner to create these beautiful symmetrical forms. This in itself was energy and the planet Earth's intelligences. When individuals touch, feel, and interact with crystals, they are tuning into the cosmic intelligence of our universe. This is undeniable. Plus, quartz crystals ability to modulate and focus energy known as piezoelectric piezoelectric was the one advent that has brought about the 20th century age of information we would not have radios computers or telephone communication without this scientific attribute quartz crystals was all about communication so to understand this, one could tune into them as an energy modulator of one's thoughts and feelings as a perfect tool for consciousness. At this point, I was feeling really good that I had done a decent job in communicating the unseen world of metaphysics with the seen world of physics. Once each of the panelists had a chance to say what they had to about this new age phenomenon, Oprah then turned to the audience for a question and answer session. The very first person whom she picked ended up setting the tone for the rest of the show. This woman in the audience stands up and says, we can only serve one of two fathers, our father, Lord in heaven, or the father, the devil. It was not a question, but a statement. At this moment, I'm thinking, where is this all going to lead? I could not believe that Oprah was taking this conversation in this direction. Clearly, this woman was accusing us of serving the devil and not her view of who God was to her in her faith. First, the unity minister, Kevin Ryerson, spoke from a biblical standpoint about what this woman just stated. I knew full well one cannot win in a conversation like this because beliefs like this woman's are locked into the dogma of her religious beliefs. I have no problem with individuals' beliefs and convictions from a religious standpoint. I come from to each their own. In my mind, every religion points to the same direction, a belief in God and devotion. This is beautiful. All religions lead to the same source. What I do have a problem with is that...